Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 40 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna talk about Fourier transforms. And if you have engineering background, you probably know what this is and you probably can skip this tutorial. Uh, and uh, if you have a life sciences background, it completely depends on your curriculum, whether you were exposed to Fourier transform or not. So I plan on actually covering this topic in this video and in the next video show how Fourier transform is relevant for image processing. So I'll try to make this as straightforward as possible so we don't uh, use a lot of math in understanding Fourier transform. So first of all, uh, Fourier transform breaks a function or a signal into alternate representation. So if you think about, if you talk about Fourier transforms, everyone talks about uh, converting uh, something, a signal from time domain to frequency domain. Okay, what that breaks down to is, it shows that any signal can be reconstructed back by summing up individual sines and cosines together. So think of this as uh, trying to figure out or trying to break down uh, the recipe into individual ingredients that go into this recipe, okay? So that's what Fourier transform is, and visually you can see how this is, okay? So if you look at this image along this axis, as time goes by, the wave actually is going up and down, okay? And this is not just a sinusoid wave, it actually has, uh, you see this little bump? It's not just a uh, fine sine wave, it actually has a whole bunch of sine waves in here. Now, all Fourier transform does is it breaks this signal into individual sine waves that when I put them together, it gives me this image back or this sine wave back, okay? Think of a sine wave as an image. To get this image, I'm breaking this down into individual images. When I put them together, I get this back. Now, if you look at this from a different dimension, from a different direction, uh, and plot this as frequencies, you see this sine wave has a specific frequency, right? Let's say this frequency is 20 hertz, okay? So this line represents 20 hertz. Okay, and this is the amplitude. Okay, in a way, think of amplitude as the contribution of that sine wave, okay, towards this final image. And this image, again, at a different frequency, let's say this frequency is 45 hertz, and then the amplitude is along the y axis. So Fourier transform breaks this image into this image. Now, why is that useful? Well, let's actually look at, uh, first of all, how it is constructed, okay? So the equation for a continuous Fourier transform is uh, minus infinity to infinity. Why? Because this keep waveform keeps going, right? So minus infinity to infinity, x of t. x of t is uh, this, this uh, signal e to the minus j 2 pi f t dt. And this j stands for complex number, okay? Again, don't be intimidated by this entire equation. We're not gonna do anything with that equation. Now, I just uh, am displaying that to show you the difference between continuous and discrete for your transform. Now, when we are collecting an image or when we collect a signal, whatever that signal is, we're not collecting them in a continuous way, right? We are sampling them at some intervals. When you're collecting an image, it's actually collecting, you know, you have different pixels, for example. It's not a continuous analog uh, image anymore. So for digital signals, you look at discrete because you're going from some specific time to uh, some specific time, right? You start at a time zero to time, I don't know, five minutes. That's your experiment time. So it's discrete and within that time, you're breaking the signals, you're collecting the signals, let's say every five seconds. So this is your discrete Fourier transform. It looks very similar to this other equation, except you have this component and number of samples, okay? Now, how do we use that information? Again, like I explained, this e to the negative j, this j stands for a complex number, and this is your input signal. Now, why is it relevant for image processing? Well, if you have an image like this, when you convert that into a Fourier space, it looks somewhat like this, okay? And the central region represents the low frequency components and the outer regions represents the high frequency components. In other words, edges that are high frequency components in the image are represented by these, these pixels on the outer edge of this FFT image. Okay, so how do we extract the edges? By masking out all the contribution coming from the center and only looking at the contributions from the outside, you can actually create a uh, edge detection. And this is your uh, low pass filter. Okay, so which we'll do in the next tutorial. So this is a quick background of what Fourier 
transform is and now let's jump into the code so I can uh, explain this a little further so first of all uh, again I put a lot of notes uh, here so you can pause and read it if you want but uh, initially I am going to use these lines to create a sine wave I, I want to use a sine wave but because we are all looking at images I want the sine wave to be an image so this is what these lines of code actually does. And if I run this code, you can actually see this is a sine wave of certain frequency. If I change the frequency, if I uh, decrease the frequency, then uh, let's go ahead and plot these again. I'm going to explain this a little bit in a second. There you go, that's the sine wave, okay? And when I divide this by 60 here, then uh, the calculate the sine values and the frequency changes again, okay? So this is a sine wave in two dimensions why because you see the intensity is going up going down going up going down and so on and i put this in a, a visual way so we can understand this from an image processing point of view now how did i generate this again i don't want to make this a tutorial about creating the sine waves but uh, go ahead and look at this code first of all i'm generating values up to 0 to 256 uh, 255 okay and then i'm calculating my y as sine of this values every value from 0 to 255 okay uh, uh, and i'm dividing this by 60 which defines my uh, frequency in this image okay and uh, i'm actually applying this uh, two fur loops right here again you can actually write this as fur i and fur j like two nested fur loops i'm just doing it in one single line please practice this part if you're new to uh, coding Okay, so once I have this image, or you could have loaded an image that looks like this, okay, which is what, uh, in fact, I did uh, uh, earlier, but then I thought of actually writing it to have much better control over the frequency. Now, uh, let's uh, not import an image yet. Let's actually look at this uh, on our sine wave. So the way you apply uh, Fourier transform is within CV2, or OpenCV, there's a function called DFT, discrete Fourier transform, okay? Again, we are doing discrete Fourier transform here. So that's it. So to apply, to get DFT, CV2.DFT, and then it only applies on values in floating point 32. Our original image is 8-bit, so it's not going to work unless I convert those values into float 32. That's what this is. That's it. Okay, and then uh, there are a few flags you can actually apply as part of your DFT. And the one I'm going to apply is called complex output, meaning my output will be a complex number. Remember the J component, I want to include that. Okay, that's what this is. Next, I'm shifting it, DFT shift. I take this DFT and I'm shifting it using numpy.fft.fft shift. What does that mean? Well, if you don't shift it, when you plot it, then uh, your DFT signal is along the at the origin as the center, like top left part of the image. Like at this part of the image, you'll have the center and you don't see anything. Just so we can see things very well, I'm going to move this origin to the center right here. This is very common for Fourier transform. And now I can see things in a symmetric way. Okay, my low pass is in the center and high pass is in the out, uh, uh, or high frequency signal is in the uh, outer sides, okay? That's what the shift does. And we can look at this image with, uh, with and without the shift. Now the magnitude spectrum is 20 log, okay? And again, the magnitude is given as 20 log of uh, the real component and the imaginary component. Again, DFT shift, all pixels in X, all pixels in Y, and zero is our real number, one is our imaginary number, okay? So in fact, I think I should just run this line, DFT, so we can see the values up here. You see, it says 256 by 256 by two, the two stands for the first one being real, the second one being imaginary numbers, okay? That's what that stands for. And if I do DFT shift, let's go ahead and run it. DFT shift is, it's, it shifted the center pixels or the top left corner pixels to the center. So this value 8617984 will be at zero, uh, at, the, at the center of the image. So let's see if we can hunt that value down. Uh, 
if I go down to this is 256 image right so let's actually go down to 125 and again 125 let's keep going oh too much let's come back so it should be somewhere around here 125 so this 8617984 value should be somewhere around here okay so 125 125 but you, uh, but it's visible as you can see there is nothing there and along uh, along the center you have certain values right there so you can tell that this is this is completely shifted okay so uh, that's what the ft shift does and now we know what the magnitude spectrum is magnitude spectrum basically quantifies this let's run this line actually and if you look at magnitude spectrum, so it's a floating point 32 and 256 by 256. We don't have the imaginary component anymore because we are taking this and, uh, you know, this, this uh, complex number and extracting the magnitude out of it. Okay, and then I'm just plotting it. That's it. So initially, let's actually uh, remove this DFT shift. And uh, how do we account for, I don't want to change any of these. So what I'll do is DFT underscore shift is equal to dft so basically i'm not shifting it i'm just looking at dft let's plot it let's plot uh, the input image fft image okay both of these showing up here so this is the input image and my fft image is not showing anything that's because the signal is all around zero and right there so this is why we need dft shift okay so I think uh, I spent enough time on DFT shift so you know why we are using it now. So now when you run the code again, you see how the signal is moving from up there to down here. That's exactly what shift is doing. Okay, now what's going on here? You look at these two, it's a bit difficult to see, but I don't know if you can see one dot right there, another dot right here around the center. That represents this uh, uh, frequency. Now if I change the frequency to, uh, if I increase the frequency, you'll see that the dots are separating. I hope you can see that one here, one here. They're kind of separating. Now, if I go to, for example, 10 and inc increase the frequency, you see how these yellow peaks, I mean, I call them dots, but you can see how these two peaks right there are separating uh, from the origin, okay? Now, if I go to five, again, let's keep increasing the frequency so you can kind of see the effect of it. So as the frequency increases, the distance between these two components is actually uh, uh, increasing, okay? Again, that's why we call the central part low frequency component and the outer part high frequency component. Let's make that even higher, okay? Let's do this uh, X over two. And uh, actually, sorry, let's do this X over three and run this. And here you have very high frequency. And now you can see the one peak here, another peak over there. OK, so as the frequency increases, the distance is separating, meaning representation of those frequencies in the FFT space it lies at uh, that position and this position. These two are symmetric, by the way. OK, lesson number one, low frequency at the center, high frequency around the edges, okay? That's all this is. Uh, and that's because we did FFT shift, okay? If you otherwise uh, on the top left corner, again, uh, it's, it's a bit uh, difficult to imagine how things will look like if you don't do the shift. Okay, so now that we understand this, let's actually look at an actual image. Instead of uh, creating a sine wave, let's actually load an image, the same uh, sandstone image I showed you earlier, and look at how the response looks like. So let's go ahead and run it. Now we should see representation all around, okay? And the center represents the low frequency and the outer regions represents high frequency. In the next tutorial, let's actually take this code and apply a mask on the regions in the center to see how the output image looks like. And obviously, we know the answer. It looks like edges, okay? So we will be building a edge detection filter. If we mask the edges out and only let the central components through, which is the low frequency, I'll let you think about what that actually does. Okay, what do you mean by letting only the low frequencies? How does that affect the image? Okay, it has to do with the noise. Okay, so please watch the next tutorial to find out the answer to this question and also look at how to implement this uh, mask so we can create a uh, FFT based digital filter. 
Thank you very much and please subscribe to this channel.